Glad to have you back. Yes, the program is Political Spectrum, reaching your life from the beautiful hills of Ibiakaran. But just for a reminder, this conversation, of course, uh, this particular program is live on our different social media handles on Facebook and, of course, on Instagram with the handle at Spectrum TV. NG. And uh, I'm going to be joined by uh, a political affairs analyst in the person of Osundu Ahirika virtually. And we are going to have this conversation on the, over the phone, of course. And uh, it's quite a number of questions bothering the minds of our quiver minds. And we are going to, you know, maybe possibly highlight some of them and first of it is uh, of course i would like to ask you because i know he's listening and watching right away i'd like to ask you of course uh, on sunday precisely mr hirika uh, the governor on sunday sunday evening named uh, his commissioner for lands as his preferred successor how how would you describe that move well the governor is within his rights not just as a governor, but as a citizen, to stand or support any candidate he thinks is best uh, suited to succeed him in office. Now, for anyone to say the governor should not or ought not to have done that, that is hypocrisy. Uh, and I, I wouldn't support that. If I were the governor, I will definitely want to have a say in who succeeds me because having assembled a team, I know the person among the, amongst the, my team members who I think in my consideration, my estimation, given the work the person has put in, will be able to best carry out or best consolidate upon my achievements in office. So to that extent, the governor is within his rights to do so. Now, let me tell you, for every leader, every leader has a team. And within that team, he has another team. He knows those who deliver on assignments. He knows those who have passion for service. He knows those who, in his consideration, are best uh, you know, uh, qualified to carry out further responsibilities, perhaps without supervision, or have vision from the memos they've submitted to him, from uh, discussions they've had, from implementation of his policy and, and, and plans. And then they know, he knows that they are going to do this. So the governor has done what naturally was expected for him. Of course, the entire state was waiting for the governor to uh, actually make a choice, and that choice he has finally made. Now, again, let me tell you this. Every aspirant, every aspirant's earnest prayer, I'm sure they even fasted and prayed and consulted people or others to intercede for them, seeking the governor's uh, endorsement. There is no aspirant who can look at you boldly and tell you that he did not wish or he never prayed for the governor to endorse him. And now that the governor has endorsed somebody, it is totally out of place and wrong, in my view and in my consideration, for anyone to now start blaming the governor or blaming that aspirant who has been so endorsed. Uh, if, if I were to be in the race, I tell you the truth, I will do everything within my power and God's grace to cut the governor and then secure his endorsement and where he has endorsed another person uh, i will not begrudge him because of course his choice must be limited to one he cannot choose two people he cannot choose because there can only be one governor at a time and maybe having put all the factors together the governor has over time given his criterion for who he thinks will be will likely image his preferred successor he has he has said over time he has listed those qualities and perhaps in this single candidate uh, Pastor Moino, you know, he has uh, uh, aspirant. He has come to find those qualities he has so espoused over the years. The variables put before him, all the aspirants put before him, and in his uh, <clears throat> in his own uh, estimation, this is the best one suited. Then who should begrudge him? Three. Uh, the governor said he is going to seek the face of God, and that he is going to ask God to reveal to him a successor. Now, I can tell you this for granted. I've heard people say, eh, is he a pastor? It is pastors that see visions. Okay, why didn't the pastors, uh, why didn't the pastors who presented, who were there when the candidate were presented, be the ones uh, that gave him the vision? Now, nobody can actually say how far and how well the governor has engaged all these people at various strata, uh, behind, the, uh, behind the scenes, 
how he has engaged this man of God, if he has gone into a prayer cell with them, if they have communicated with him, if he has shared his vision with them, if they have prayed about it and perhaps he has gotten their confirmation and their blessing and their affirmation. So all these things must not be ruled out. Nobody should say, ah, it is, who even knows if perhaps one of those prophets, because every, every man has his pastor, every man has his priest, every man has a spiritual father. If they have told him, look, this is the direction God wants you to do. And then he puts it to the plate and gives others to cast lots in prayer. I mean, these lots now, I'm using it very carefully. That's in prayer. And then he got the confirmation. Look at how long it has taken him to even arrive with a successor. And then finally, he has come up with one. So who will say the governor has not done well or the governor has done badly in finally stating a successor? Now, I'm speaking subjectively and objectively too. He is a person. He has feelings. He has emotions. He has his considerations. He has his vision. He has his plans. He, 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 in fact, his best uh, position, uh, the Bible people say, I'm a kaisu I am on He is the one at the middle of this uh, in the eye of this storm is the one in front he knows what he sees and what he expects and so if he has come up with a template uh, nobody should blame him uh, rather those who support and see eyeball to eyeball with him show rally around his vision those who do not can as well begin to re-strategize uh, there is room for realignment now the governor's endorsement does not mean that everybody must align those who see eyeball to eyeball with the governor, can support his vision, can endorse his candidate and also align. Those who do not can realign, re-strategize and begin their own uh, consultations and also seek the endorsement of the governor. Who knows, the governor can also stoop over for and endorse them. After all, people say it is not over until it's over. So to see people coming online to castigate the governor, to insult him, to cast aspersions, I am, it is a no-no for me because I believe that there is still room for engagement. I remember back some months ago when Pastor Moino held a Thanksgiving to uh, mark uh, his uh, wedding anniversary, a lot of his survival from COVID-19 and a lot of other things. His appointment into the estate school and being made a commissioner, the graces of God upon his ministry. People were livid with rage and anger and they said why must it be done what kind of thanksgiving it is and i i said then anybody who feels that the thanksgiving is an issue let the person hold his own thanksgiving and thanks goodness uh, distinguished senator basi albert the senator representing a quite not a senatorial district as a US senatorial district who is also a governorship aspirant held his thanksgiving a, 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 a few days back and we saw how massively it was well attended. So every other aspirant can also hold his own Thanksgiving. The same thing with the endorsement. The governor has endorsed somebody. Every other aspirant can also walk up to the governor and still seek the same endorsement, the same blessing. And I, I am not sure the governor can close the door to any of the aspirants. All of them have a fair chance of being considered. They say Okibom was there. Uh, why must Okibom go to Okibom? His doors are not shut. His doors are not open. Look, it is a, a wide field. I am an Igbo man, and in my culture, we say the sky is wide enough for every bird to fly. The vulture, the, the uh, uh, pelican, the, the dove, the eagle, the hawk, uh, the turtle dove, all of them, let them fly. The one that says the other should not fly, let his wings be broken. So for me, I don't think the space is being constricted. Rather, the space is open. The field is wide. Every aspirant can go on, engage the electorate, engage the masses, engage the stakeholders, engage the, 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 the elders of the party, engage the PDP, engage the delegates. If it's going to be a delegate in nation, engage the greater masses, and then sell his opinion. It is not going to work by insulting people or by casting expressions of the governor or by vituperations or by blackmail. It is going to work by you, every aspirant walking out there to the field to engage the people, to sell their vision, to market their ideas, to let if acquiring people see their blueprints. And with that done, I can tell you they also stand a chance to uh, have something out of this electoral contest. Well, Mr. Hirika, you, you've spoken much, but I'd like to find out, do you think the governor is uh, test sampling? Because he had a lot of names. There, there were quite a number of names, speculations, on his wild cast uh, list. And of course, do you think this is like test sampling or trying to see uh, test loyalty of party, party men uh, to God. find out who's loyal and who's not? What's your opinion on that? 
I don't think the governor is the sampling uh, opinions or uh, uh, trying to test loyalty. Uh, we've gone far beyond that now. The governor has made a decision. And of course, consistency is the game here. Now that this decision has run open, like the videos will say, when a child is born in the market square, there is no need to ask the woman to close her legs again. He has made a choice, he has made a choice. And it is either you align with the choice or you seek an alternative and re-strategize. I think that's the situation we find ourselves in. The only person that cannot make the choice he has made now is the governor. And yes, like the Bibles will say, uh, he is the one that, uh, that has cast the dice. He is the one that can withdraw the dice. But uh, uh, would that be very convenient? I don't think inconsistency has been a, a part of this governor. We've known him to be a consistent fellow all this while. Uh, well, politics is not predictable. But uh, for me, I, I don't consider that he's sampling opinions. We've gone way beyond that, and it is time to get serious. And I think, from all intents and purposes, the governor has uh, finally spoken. And uh, the Bible says, uh, once have I spoken, twice have I heard. Power belongs to God. He has spoken once. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, he can speak again. If it is God that told him and unveiled a successor to him, I don't think that God can speak a second time. So since he said it is God that revealed to him, I don't think God uh, is the author of confusion or, or that God will ask him to change his mind. Then that will not be the God we all know or we all serve, except it's a different God. But if it's that same God, then I know the governor has spoken and uh, he will sell, fly or sink with this choice. So um, going forward, uh, I think what you're going to have in the politics is going to be realignments. And um, if there are people who don't feel sympathetic um, to his choice or feel aligned to his choice, they have options before them. Uh, there may be defections, who knows? People may defect to other parties uh, to actualize the ambition. Uh, or people may go the whole hog and until uh, somebody wins the ticket in the primaries uh, before we this case is rested. But like I said, they, they, we are still a long way uh, to Uhuru. It's still a long walk uh, to the uh, uh, candidacy uh, for someone emerging the authentic candidate of the PDP where the governor is uh, has pitched his tent. And uh, we see going forward how all these things play out. Okay, uh, Mr. Hiriker, now the thing is, uh, the governor's preferred choice of successor, I'm talking about Honorable Umoy Nonaun, happens to come from the same local government where one of the leading aspirants, I'm talking about an of your clue now, is coming from. Do you think uh, it's a strategy to have um, a divided followership? Yes, I know, uh, you know, instead of uh, 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 Pastor Moeno, who happens to be endorsed by the governor, comes from, uh, has four or three other very credible, very superlative, very, um, I, I don't even know the adjectives to use, very qualified uh, candidates uh, or aspirants, sorry, not a candidate at this time, aspirants who have indicated interest in also running for governor. We have former uh, mobile, uh, retired mobile uh, executive director, uh, Mr. Dumi Noyo. We have the right honorable member representing uh, it in a federal constituency and former speaker of Akwam State House Assembly, a man of the people, uh, uh, right honorable barrister North York Luke. We also have Senator Efion Bob, the former uh, distinguished senator who represented Akwam North East Entire District for two terms. And in fact, a man that has been a former attorney general of the state uh, and many other things down the line, uh, who also indicated interest uh, from that axis, from Mr. Rubium, local government in particular, and it's in a federal constituency uh, at large in the office of the governor. Now, within, uh, your, your question is whether this is a strategy by the governor to divide them. Uh, I don't think so. I don't see, consider it so. Um, uh, rather, even if you go to, to Ibn Ibn Federal Constituency, where we also have several uh, uh, aspirants who, of course, were claiming, uh, who have been uh, agitating that it should be zoned, uh, the governorship should be micro zoned to them. Uh, and what if, let's look at a scenario, what if the governor had made one choice from there? That question will also come is he dividing them? 
I don't think it's a division. Like I said earlier, the governor is limited to taking just one person to support. One person. He cannot support more than one person at a time because there can only be one governor. Okay. And uh, maybe he has considered all these candidates vis-a-vis -vis his vision, vis-a-vis -vis his plan, uh, and uh, other considerations, uh, perhaps reports, security reports, uh, which are only uh, known to him, or counsel, which are all open to him, which we may not be private to, and then out of the lot, he decides to go with one. Of course, he cannot go with everybody at mm. the same time. Mm. That's within his right to do so, like I, I said earlier. Now, uh, among these aspirants, I learned uh, Senator Efion Bob, who, in fact, in his campaign slogan, was saying the best of the best. That's uh, coming from the name Bob, best okay. of the best, uh, has so far stepped down and decided to align with his brothers. All of them are brothers at the end of the day. And I tell you, uh, there are options open to them. They can, uh, the other aspirants can as well consider what uh, the Senator from Bob have done, uh, has done and say, this is our brother, this is our chance. Uh, let's sit down together, uh, let's meet minds and know the way forward. And perhaps decide to align with the governor and adopt uh, oh, Pastor Moyna right, as Mr. the consensus Mr. Hirika, time will fail us to dwell on this, but on your last thoughts, let me quickly ask you. At this point in time in our Kwaibom state, do you think the experience of Honorable Moyno, his antecedents, his, uh, his character, is what a Kwaibom needs at this particular time? Well, if you're talking about character, um, he's a pastor, a man of God, of long standing, with roots from the Apostolic Church before he founded his own ministry. Definitely, he has character, if that is what you're going to look at. Because without character, he wouldn't, a man that is a hotelier, being a pastor and own running a church, he has character. That can be taken uh, 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 for a given because of his antecedents. Um, then he's, he's been a very successful private businessman. He has, he has the middle touch, what he has touched. Look at his royalty uh, hotels uh, group uh, and look at all the businesses affiliated to him that he has done. You will see excellence. He has over 500 people under his employ and, and that tells you a lot. Uh, somebody who has completely made success out of every venture he has gone into hmm. and who has done it with class, with distinction. Definitely, he has what it takes to lead uh, and to make success of any dream. So if that's the experience you're talking about, and then he's been in the executive in the last uh, one year or two years and counting, uh, and he will have gotten the experience, definitely. Uh, he, he, he's, he's quick at learning. Uh, if he adds the public experience he's had, and he's been a chairman of the hotels management board uh, under the uh, Uber Water administration. So it's not that he's completely new to government per se. Uh, with okay. those, you, you can say a man who has run a church successfully. All right. Who has run his businesses successfully, who has been in government and has been successful too. Then uh, uh, I will say he has what it takes to succeed uh, at a higher level. Uh, and I think those things okay. were also... M Mr. Hika. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. It was nice uh, having you at the other end respond to some of these questions. And uh, that, that, that's the size of our show today. Of course, uh, uh, the, the governor had rightly said, while on an exclusive interview right here, we talk with Akaite, uh, Monday precisely said that it is part of democracy, that he naming his successor does not necessarily mean other people do not have a chance to also aspire and also seek their place in uh, maybe to join for the governorship race in 2023. Uh, the, the grounds is open and of course uh, everybody who deems fit, who feels he has what it takes or he has what to offer the people can also indicate interest within the party. And of course, uh, we'll be given a fair chance, of course, uh, to do so. That the governor is naming his preferred candidate under his jurisdiction because he has the freedom of rights to do so. Well, we'll put a post read right here, and that is our show for today. Political spectrum returns tomorrow. But until then, 
Bye for now. My name is Otobasi Tom.